Hello, wine lovers. Hello, wine friends. Luke Taylor here, Cork and Taylor Wine Podcast, and we've got another episode of the Cork and Taylor Wine Madness brought to you by Silvador Brands. Don't forget it. If you want gas like me, and I look at this uh, Silvador Wine Preserver and I wonder, what am I going to open next? You can open anything, anytime. Drink it the next day, a couple days after with Silvador Wine Preserver. 100% Aragon grass. Um, you want some of this stuff? Uh, go to www.silvadorbrands.com and uh, go to For Your Home. And when you check out, uh, put in Cork and Taylor to receive 10% off. And this is really good stuff and uh, love partnering with them. So uh, thank you to uh, Jim and Gary for uh, believing in me. And uh, I don't even know if they even believe in me. So. Uh, they do watch and listen, so I have to be careful, right? But uh, yeah, check uh, Silvador Brands uh, uh, Aragon, 100% Aragon Wine Preserver. So Kevin, say hi to Kevin right here. It's so bloody light. Uh, but anyway, so we have the Sweet 16 results of the first ever Cork and Taylor Wine Madness. Just don't forget, if you love us, you like us, follow us, subscribe, rate, and review here on YouTube. Uh, just go down below, thumbs up, whatever it is, press subscribe. And then all this stuff goes and whatever. I think we're up to uh, a couple more subscribers each week. So that's good. Uh, and if you like the podcast, love the podcast, enjoy the podcast, want to keep the podcast going and growing, uh, all we ask is we, me and Kevin, ask that uh, give us a five-star review. No four-star, no three-star, five-star. That helps us because that gets us to more uh, people, more places. And it really is only your time, maybe a minute or two, write a nice comment and uh what have you. So I appreciate it. Heidi Moore did one a week or two ago and we appreciate the five-star review because she's awesome. Um, the Wine Crush podcast out in Oregon and a little shout out. Uh, so yeah, it's been tight. We've got a couple people, we got one at the top and a couple people tied for a third. So I think a lot of things going to shift and change after this. And uh, next podcast we'll have uh, kind of the results of uh, who's in first and who's in second. We've got some great prizes for the first ever Cork and Taylor Wine Madness. Some of the wineries have stepped up, uh, gift cards, what have you, some prize packs, uh, Corvin, the uh, the, the sparkling uh, or the champagne, the sparkling uh, wine preserver, which is fantastic. Um, Fly with wine, some really good backpacks that you can uh, put a couple bottles of wine in, take it to a concerts, um, kids' baseball games, uh, kids' uh, dance recitals, uh, kids' um, ballet performance. Uh, cause I've done all those and, uh, I think alcohol just accentuates and, uh, excites you a little bit more and keeps you awake, stimulates the brain and mind. And also Riedel wine glasses and, uh, uh Bar Baromli Rocco, uh, they gave some decanters, um, and some glasses. So we've got some great stuff. So, all right, without further ado, we have, uh, 16 teams left in the first ever Cork and Taylor wine madness. First matchup was the number one seed, the 2018 Keenan Murnay against the 2020 Venge Arsenal Bordeaux uh, blend out of uh, Calistoga. Wasn't really close. Uh, and the history behind Keenan and Venge, uh, Kirk Venge, the uh, vintner winemaker for Venge Winery, hence the, the last name. Um, I got an itch right here, sorry. His dad, Niels, or Nils, Niels, Nils, um, was the original winemaker for Keenan. And uh, Michael um, pretty much broke his heart and let him go. But uh, who knows? But no, it was a good breakup. They still talk and what have you. Uh, I've actually seen uh, Mr. Van Gay at uh, lunch at the Keenan, so it's all good. Or maybe he's just sucking him dry for food. Who knows? Keenan Murnay, 76, Van Gay, 61. Wasn't really close. And I think the Keenan just overpowered it. Just kind of like in basketball, down low, you go down low, pound the paint, and just overpowered it. So uh, they will face the winner of Stone Street 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon from Alexander Valli uh, or the 2016 Paloma Estate Merlot. Merlot has not fared well so far in the first round. Well, there was only one of them, and it didn't fare well. So, And I think it just came again. The 2016 Paloma just could not hold up to Stone Street from Alexander Valley. They go down 72 to 55. So some kind of some lopsided games in, um, in, that, in, that, in that sweet 16 in the kind of the top of the bracket. And I will tell you the Vengue was excellent and the Paloma was spectacular. Both those wines were very good. <clears throat> Takes away from um, 
neither of the quality of any of these wines, to be honest with you. Every wine we've had in this competition has been excellent, has been good. The judges have have enjoyed. Uh, I know on, don't forget, save the date, Thursday, March 30th, which is next week, a week today, we have the first ever Cork and Taylor Wine Madness wine tasting for anybody in Northeastern Ohio. We've got... Uh, all the 22 wines you can taste, have a sampling of those, and we'll probably have about 13 to 15 more wines. I'm hoping to get 40 or 50 people at the Hilton Akron Fairlawn. The link for Eventbrite to buy tickets uh, for this great first ever Cork and Taylor Wine Madness wine tasting is in the uh, in the comments below and uh, on an Instagram and Facebook and what have you. So check that out. I think we're up to 14 people, so not bad. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, we'll get more. Uh, we're, we're a week and a half out, so usually uh, the week of we get more, but uh, that's going to be really fun. And I think next year I'm going to do it before the brackets come out or the brackets have a brack reveal party there. People can taste all the wines and they can actually, everybody that goes can get a really sneak peek and get a feel of uh, how the wines taste. So I think that's going to be really exciting next year and hope to have 32 wines. Okay. So now we're going to go to the next bracket. We've got um, the 2019 Dow Soul of a Lion against the 2019 Matera Hidden Block Cabernet. This was going to be interesting. Dow was the four seed. Matera was, uh, won their first round matchup against Peachy Canyon by one point. Um, and could they keep it co- keep it going? And they did. Matera 75, Dow sold the line 71. That was kind of the first surprise. And I don't have, uh, it's not like I don't have faith in Matera. I saw the wines. We have every freaking Matera uh, person on this podcast. Um, I think I need to get some of their uh, other people here just to have a like a Matera fest. I think they need to sponsor at the rate they're, the amount of people I've had on. I don't charge. I don't do anything of that crap to to be on the podcast. I just I love um, love their story and their passion, what have you. So Matera goes on. Who will they face? You've got the two thousand sixteen Coluna Estate Cabernet and the two thousand eighteen Trujillo. I said it right, Trujillo. You know I'm going to butcher it in a second. Two thousand eighteen Trujillo Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon Morsoli Vineyard. Who's going to win that one? That was close. Also, one point. Trujillo Reserve Cab goes on 74-73 against Coluna. That was a tight one. The Trujillo is going to be interesting because Trujillo, I believe, was their first winemaker at Matera and took gave the reins over to Chelsea Barrett. So who is going to win? And that's going to be interesting. I think that's going to be a close one. Mike Trujillo, all the Kunats, all the people at Matera. Who's going to take it? So that's going to be, I should have some side bets to get some more money for the podcast. Hey, and if you really like the podcast, you want to support us, you want to keep us going and growing, join our Patreon page. I want to thank Matt. Who else we got? Oh, Steve, Miss Nadu, and Sam Davidson for supporting us on the uh, Cork and Taylor Wine Podcast. You got some goodies coming, hopefully one of these days or never. Uh, now we're going to go to the bottom of the bracket. This is going to be interesting, especially that we had uh, Gary Eberly this week. I don't know if you heard him. You can check that out on Instagram. It's in our reels. And um, he was interesting, did not bite his tongue. And the funny story, there's some kind of some backstories to some of these winers, which is interesting. Um, like, for instance, you didn't know that uh, Corley used to, do, used to do some stuff with Freemark Abbey back in the day. Or no, Rutherford Hill, I think it was. Uh, one of the two. Is other Rutherford Hill, Free Mark Abbey. Van Gay Keenan. But then the Eberly Dunn, they actually did a wine. Randy Dunn and Gary Eberly used to do a wine, 50% from Howell Mountain, 50% from Paso. So you got the 2018, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Dunn Napa Valley Cab. And as you know, Dunn is one of my favorite wineries of all time. I love Dunn. I love Dunn. I love the wine. It's built to last. It's beautiful now. It's got some power to it, and it faced the 2019 Eberly Cabernet, Seven, or Cabernet Sauvignon, who won 60, well, I guess it was tight, 69-69 against Pride Mountain. They won 4-2 in the head-to-head of the judges. And this is an upset alert, potentially. And it was Eberly beat Dunn 77-75. to uh, No offense to Eberly. I'm a little bit surprised, and I think Gary is too. So, um Eberly, you have your ticket to the grade eight, uh, and you have always have advanced all the way from the first round on, as has Matera. So that's uh, that's pretty remarkable. Now, who are they going to face? 
either the winner of the 2018 Fremark Abbey Cabernet Sauvignon from Rutherford, giving it a little Rutherford dust, uh, just like uh, Trujillo does. He's got some Rutherford in that in his bad boy, and there's just that, that dusty, dusty. Love it. Against the 2018 Honada Totos. And I really thought the Honada Totos uh where I thought, I don't really thought, I thought Honada, would, Totus, or the Honada wine was going to be the sleeper and kind of the the dark horse and maybe sort of surprise some people. Well, they're not. Uh, the judges spoke, Fremark Abbey, 78, Honada, 76. So both great wines, and that's the thing. There's a winner and there's a loser. In life, you either win or you lose. And in go- professional golf, you lose more than you win. So what does that tell you? Stick to bicycling. All right, the lower bracket. This is going to pain me because um, I've already had threats from somebody um, from one of these wineries uh, saying that uh, I might need to check VRBO. You know who you are. You hurt me. I cry. Tears are streaming down my eye. Not this one because I have drainage, and I think I might have pink eye. So um, thank God there's nobody around me today. Uh, But... Yeah, this is going to pain me because, um, yeah, this hurts. This hurts. You know, it's all love at the Cork and Taylor Wine Podcast, and it's all love in the Cork and Taylor Wine Madness. And I think people need to realize, these wineries need to realize, I've only had one death threat so far, uh, or pretty much kicking me to the curb, uh, find a new place. Uh, Look up VRBO to find a place when you come to Napa next. So the next game was a 2017 Mira Cabernet Sauvignon in Oakville. Versus the 2017 Laird Jillian's Red Blend. And I think that front story, you know who this person is. Hopefully you're actually listening once. Uh, and I know she listens. So uh, Rebecca Laird, I'm sorry. I still love you and your family. And uh, I'm going to sell your wines. And I continue to sell your wines. But unfortunately, but fortunately for Mira, uh, the 2017 Mira Oakville Cabernet Sauvignon won against the Laird Jillian's Red Blend 77 to 75. And I wonder if price has a price has any bearings. I mean, I think the mirror sells for maybe 150, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. I know it's over 100. Jillian's Red Blend is about in the 50 dollars price range. And I will tell you, for Napa Estate Fruit, you cannot find a better wine anywhere in Napa for that price point. Hands down. I will. If if you do, I will give you my left shoe. Just my left. Figure that one out. It's like the time my sister used to like to uh, uh, send stuff to me. And um, she used to send shit all the time. And she sent these uh, uh, Don- Donald Pligny uh, designer shoes. And uh, the dog, uh, the, our dog at the time, Callie, uh, decided to eat one of them. Uh, she was a Labradoodle. And Labradoodle, I think, have a little bit of separation anxiety. And um, dog ate them. So I called Donald Pligny's uh, hotline. I said, hey, I just want to buy one left size uh, let's just say seven and a half shoe and they said well we can't sell you one shoe i'm like well why not and she explained to me so i actually had to buy the shoe and but the good thing is it's the last time she ever sent me uh shoes so um yeah i think they set up a post box in uh buffalo because of it but not my problem not my problem i've got my own issues here at the cork and taylor wine podcast and traderman distributors (coughs) the next matchup is the 2018 Corley Reserve Cabernet and the 2018 Chimney Rock Stags Leap. So, this is going to be interesting because uh, this is really actually the, probably one of the close, the second closest matchup bar from Pride and Eberly. The Chimney Rock from Stags Leap I've always enjoyed. We're going to have uh, Elizabeth Vienna uh, coming up. And then Chris Corley is a phenomenal winemaker. Family does great stuff. I'm uh, great stuff. I'm excited and proud to sell their wines in the state of Ohio. And the Reserve Cab is delicious, as is the Chimney Rock. Chimney Rock, no lie. Now you got to remember this is out, out of a 96 point scale. Chimney Rock scored 78.75. I guess we're doing quarters. Um, Corley got 78 and a half. So Chimney Rock won by 0.25, one quarter, one fourth, whatever you want to call it, to go to the next round to face Mira. So that was close. It's amazing 
how a quarter point can change the life and trajectory of a winery here on the first ever Cork and Taylor Wine Madness. So those are the final eight. We are down to eight, and then we'll get down to four, and then we'll go get down to two, and then you know what happens after two? We get down to one. Who is going to win the illustrious crystal trophy of the Cork and Taylor Wine Madness? So we're going to have Keenan versus Stone Street. That will be interesting because you have Napa versus Alexander Valley. We got Matera against Trujillo in a battle of um, master versus student, per se, I guess, a little bit. Not really, but okay. I just want to set the Karate Kid drama. Uh, we've had uh, uh, Mark Kamen on the podcast. One of the most interesting interviews, Kamen Wineries. The inventor, writer, developer of the Karate Kid. And then uh, then we got in the lower bracket, we have Eberly versus Free Mark Abbey. Can Eberly continue the reign of beating Napa Cabs. We got Free Mark Abbey. And then Mira Chimney Rock. So this will be really interesting to see how Mira from Oakville faces Chimney Rock from Stag's Leap. Probably my two favorite, uh, well, I love Spring Mountain too. I, I like I like all of Napa to be honest with you. The only place I'm a little bit skeptical of is Pope Valley because it's kind of creepy. It's really dark up there. I've stayed up there once before and, and Rebecca, I'm not gonna stay there again. It was like poltergeist. <clears throat> it's really beautiful, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of vineyards and not a lot, lot of uh, uh, life forms. Um, you heard like animals like howling and massacres of animals and stuff like that. It was it was interesting, but it was gorgeous. But uh, I will, Pope Valley, I, I they make some great wines, uh, northeastern part of Napa. But I mean, there's just not life, form. there's not many people up there. It's a lot of vineyards, but it's gorgeous. So um, yeah, so we'll have... Keenan Stone Street, Matera Trujillo, Eberly Freemark Abbey, and Mira Chimney Rock. It's going to be real. It's going to be great. As a, the young people say, it's going to be lit. Uh, go to challenge.com backslash Cork and Taylor Wine Madness to see how you're doing or how other people are doing. As you know, first, second, and third get some great prizes from all a lot of these wineries. And my goal next year is 32 wines. Make it even. You start off 32. We get to 16, get to 8, 4, 2, 1. If you have any suggestions on, um, not of this podcast because I, I know I'm going to get some from some of these <laughs> winery owners, but if you can suggest anybody that would be a good interview, I've got to uh, start building up some more interviews. I've probably got about four or five still, um, which will start hitting again uh, in a week or two after the starts. Next week, we're going to have two, I think we're going to have two podcasts, uh, and then we'll have one uh, the following week, and then the following week, we'll get back to regular podcasts. We've got a Avery from uh, Larkmead. I've got Doug Stanton from um, uh, Stanton Winery. That was pretty easy, remember? Uh, Hugh Davies from Schramsburg. And I feel, oh, and I've got the man, the lift, the legend. I've got Ren Harris from Paradigm, too. So we've got some really good uh, podcasts coming up. Uh, just remember to like us, to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram. If you want to support us, go to www.patreon.com backslash Cork and Taylor. That really helps us. I've got some really big plans next year. I'd love to go to Bordeaux, do some uh, podcasts there. And as you know, I love live podcasts. And as, a, as little as a, a cup of coffee a day, you can support the Cork and Taylor Wine Podcast, me and Kevin. Uh, I thank Silverdor Brands uh, for partnering and just go to www.silverdorbrands.com. Go to For Your Home and when you check out, put in Cork and Taylor to receive 10% off. And this is a great product. I mean, Larry loves it. Uh, Master saw me and he knows a little bit something about something. I thank all the partners. I thank all the wineries. I thank Fly With Wine, Corvin, Riedel, uh, Bromley Rocco. And uh, all the wineries that have participated uh, in the first ever Cork and Taylor Wine Madness. I wish you guys all a great day. Keep drinking the good stuff. That's the big thing. Keep drinking the good stuff. And as did, uh, my interview with Gary Eberly on Instagram states, doesn't matter price. Price does not dictate quality. So as we're seeing, Eberly is the most, uh, is the, I don't want to say cheapest, but uh, a very competitively priced and it's in the final eight. So that should tell you something. So thank you. God bless you. Luke Taylor out. Or as I say in my house, bye Felicia. Bye.